Okay, so yesterday we talked about the equilibrium constant. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, so today we are going to do some of our... I'm going to do some examples of how to calculate the KC value. So they tell us the following reaction takes place in a sealed two cubic decimeter container. We see sealed, we know it is a closed system or an isolated system. And then we're happy because then we can, can do all the calculations with our chemical equilibrium, okay? We see all of our products and our reactants are all in gas, in the gas state. So that means that you okay? Yes, Did you break the chair? Yes. Okay. So because we have gases present, that means if we want to calculate something, our volume for the gases will be 2 cubic decimeters. Okay. Then they tell us at equilibrium. Right? And if we want to calculate our equilibrium constant, we take the concentrations at equilibrium, right? Okay, so they tell us at equilibrium, the following quantities are present. 0 0.3 moles of sulfur dioxide, uh, 0 0.1 mole of oxygen, and 1.12 mole of sulfur trioxide? Yeah, sulfide would be the ion. This is not the ion. Okay, so now they ask us for question A, calculate the value of Kc. Can we calculate the value directly? Can we do it now? What do we need? No. We need the concentration. They gave us the mole, right? But first we have to calculate our concentrations before we can calculate the Kc value. Okay, so for SO2, our mole is equal to, no, let's do it the other way around. Our concentration is equals to our mole divided by our volume, right? So for SO2, the concentration will be 0 0.3 moles divided by two cubic decimeters, right? Because they tell us they're in a sealed two cubic decimeter container. For, now what's next? Oxygen, we have our concentration equal to 0 0.1 divided by two. Okay, and lastly, we have the SO3, where our concentration is equal to 1.12 divided by 2. So this is going to give us a concentration of 0 0.15. This is going to be 0 0.05. And this one will be what? What is it? 0 0.56. No, there, there is mine. 0 0.56. Okay, concentration is measured in what? Yeah, moles, I'm not going to write it for everyone, but it's mole per cubic decimeter. Okay, so now we can calculate our Kc value. Our Kc value is the concentration of our products. In this case, it's just SO3. And this is divided by the concentration of our reactants, which is the concentration of our SO2 and our oxygen. You guys happy with this equation? No. What? The and SO2 because of the coefficients. If this was a 3, okay, it would be the concentration cubed yes. right okay so now we can just fill in our concentrations and work it out so this is 
Zero point one five cube divided by oh 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 yeah five six. I have the wrong number in my mind. Yeah. Okay. Then it is zero point one five cubed and zero point zero five. Okay. What answer that do we get? This is the concentration of our SO3. We calculated it here. Okay, what's the unit here? We don't have a unit. Thank you. It's a ratio, so no unit. Okay, so... Is this a high or a low KC value? Hmm? Is this a large or a small value for KC? It's a high value. It's a large value. Okay. So that leads me to question B. What can be concluded from this value? And if you remember... Okay, what, what do we know if we have a high KC value? The concentration. Okay, so the concentration of our products is bigger than the concentration of our reactant. So if the KC value is like, it's not in the then the reactants are in the Okay, and what else can we say? It's industrially economical. It's in industrial economically. Okay. So. Also, when they ask that question, you have to go to both of them. I feel I spelled economical wrong. Okay, so what you're going to say in the exam is you are going to say in words the concentration of our products is more than the concentration of our reactants or we have a high yield. Okay, so we have a lot of products, not that much reactants left at equilibrium. And it is very economical. Hello, man. Hi. How are you? I'm not so, I'm not with this child. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's the English. I said, wait, I'm not going to let my things to press. Because I have to take them back. Yeah, God, what is that? When you, okay. So I interrupted. I know. It's okay. Oh, yes, you can. Um, but I, I don't know if that, if they will uh, mark that right because even though it is right, it might not answer their question. Okay. Okay. Um, is it right if she says our oh, equilibrium lies to to the right? Okay, so it's not wrong, it is right, because we have a lot of products, so equilibrium relies to the right. Okay, so maybe, maybe, maybe they do will give marks uh, for that, but I'm not sure what the memo says, what the memo would say. Thank you, Desi, you got working guidelines. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, so that is our first uh, example question. The next one says, a mixture of hydrogen and iodine reacts at 700 degrees Celsius. At equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen is this, and iodine is that, 0 0.4. And we have a KC value of 50, and they ask us to calculate the 
concentration of hydrogen iodide iodide yes okay so we say yes thank you that was my next question okay so because they tell us there's a mixture of these and then they react together these two are our reactants okay so we have h2 plus i2 which will give us h i yes then we need to balance the equation so we need a two in front of our hydrogen iodide why is hydrogen so weird to say hydrogen hydrogen water stuff so it's literally water stuff <laughs> water stuff okay so can we calculate our kc value now okay so our kc value is equal to the concentration of what's our product h i squared divided by the concentration of our hydrogen gas and our uh, iodine gas uh yes they do give us the kc value we'll, we'll get to that now i spoke wrong okay so they give us the kc value and they want us to calculate this concentration right so now we fill in what we have hmm? yes we're going to substitute so we have a kc value of 50 we want to calculate this concentration <clears throat> then we divide by 0 0.45 times 0 0.4 and this will give us a concentration of what nope nope it's three so we have three, this is a concentration, so it is three, three what? Three mole per cubic decimeter. Okay, what did you get? Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, yes. <coughs> what? <laughs> as long as nothing's burning, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's probably this the sound or something flying by or something. Okay. There's nothing burning in there, don't worry. Yeah, these, like, um, exam, typical exam typical questions, yes. Oh, it's this We're getting to the harder question now. Okay. The seven? Over here. Yes. Okay. It was just there. Remember, because uh, they tell us um, when we change our temperature, that counts as uh, something we change and a new equilibrium must be established. Okay. So you'll see that in the next question, they tell us they react and reach equilibrium at this temperature. And then they ask us to calculate the KC value at that specific temperature. Okay. So it's just because we must remain at a constant temperature. Unless the question is about a change in temperature. Okay, so 24 grams of carbon and 3 moles of carbon dioxide are sealed in a 10 cubic decimeters container. What does this mean? 
it's equal to our volume for our gases. So they react and reach an equilibrium. Then they give us this equation. Is this equation happy? Are you guys happy with that? Why? It's not balanced. Okay, so how are we going to balance it? CO2. We are going to put a 2 in front of our carbon monoxide. Okay, because we have two C's on this side and one, two C's on that side. It's okay, you're not the only one. Oh, okay. So then they tell us the contents of the container are then analyzed after they reach equilibrium. And the container is found to contain two moles of carbon monoxide. Then they ask us to calculate the KC value. So can we take these two, convert them into concentrations, yes. and calculate the KC value? Yes. No. Because this is sealed in a container, then they react and reach equilibrium. So these are our initial values, not our final values. The mole table, yes. Okay, so how should... Okay, so when they give you initial values and final values, okay, when they give you both, but not all of both, that's when you know you have to do a mole table. Yes. Okay, so we have beginning, change, and end. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. So they tell us, okay, first of all, products are zero at the start. Okay, then they tell us at the end there are two moles of carbon monoxide present. Right? So that means somehow, we know how, but... We added two moles of carbon monoxide. Okay. But we do have our initial values for carbon and, yeah, carbon and carbon dioxide. So initially there are three moles of carbon dioxide. And quickly we calculate mole is equal to mass over molar mass for carbon. Okay, this is for carbon. Our mass is 24. Molar mass is 12. So we get 2 moles. So initially we have 2 moles of carbon. Right, everyone still with me? Okay, so how do we figure out how much moles we used? Okay, so we use this ratio. So we have plus 2 times 1 over 2. So that means we used... Okay, so, so, so we have the ratio of 1 to 2. Okay, so it's obviously going to go from 2 to 1, right? Okay, so it's the same as taking 2 and multiplying that with 1 over 2. It's the same as dividing it by 2. Okay, but for example, if this was 3, we would have multiplied it with 3 over 2. Okay. Uh, the, that, that was just an example. Or oh, the, the, what, yeah. This. Okay, so it's from here. They tell us 3 moles of CO2. Okay, hang on a second. Your hand was up first. This two. This two. Okay, because they tell us at the contents of the container are analyzed and the container is found to contain two moles of CO. 
after they reach equilibrium. So. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that depends. Okay, it could be 2 over 5 as well. It depends which one is 5 over 2. Okay, so there's more moles of CO2 than there is of... Oh, oh, more moles of carbon monoxide than there is of carbon dioxide. So we know we must multiply with something smaller than 1. So we know it's 1 over 2. If it was if this was a five, okay, we need we know we have to have more CO two, so we have to multiply with a number larger than one. So we multiply with five over two. Okay, who of you have accounting? Okay, have you ever heard of something that you mol with what you suk with what you hate? Okay, so you you multiply with what you have over what you want right so we have no it's the other way around what you what you want over what you have okay so we take this two we want one for carbon dioxide and we have the two of the carbon monoxide okay what you want over what you have okay so that's how we multiply this with 1 over 2 for both our carbon dioxide and our carbon monoxide. Then we get that they both lose 1 mole. Then we end with... Mm -mm. Yeah, because remember, that is for calculating your, uh, what do you call it, the, the um, determining reagent? What, what, what's that word again? The limiting reagent, right? But we are busy with the equilibrium reaction, right? So there will always be some reactants and products in our container. So there's not a limiting reagent, right? Because none of them are going to be used up. Okay, so we don't use these ones, no. Okay, because what you are thinking of is calculating a limiting reagent, but this is an equilibrium reaction, so there's always some of it present. No, we use the change in our products for this case, in this case. Yes. I'm going to use it now to say 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so we have 1 moles of carbon left at equilibrium. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So we have 2 moles of carbon dioxide left after equilibrium. Yes. Yes, okay, right, because the reaction starts... And then we create carbon monoxide. Okay, two moles was created. So we can And then we calculated the moles of the reactant. At the beginning, yes. Mm -hmm. Are we not using those values to calculate how much will be used to the change? No, we use those of the product. Okay, what they gave us. So they gave us at the end that there are two moles of carbon monoxide present. Okay, so because we can't say, okay, we are going to use all of the carbon, for example, so that we have a negative two here. We can't say that because this is an equilibrium reaction. So there must always be some reactants and some products always. Because remember, it's a constant, okay, uh, reactants turning into products, products turning back into the action. It's a constant um, uh, dynamic equilibrium that happens. Okay, you add your hand up. Here. Yeah. Okay, so that is when we, uh, we know we've added two moles of CO 
two moles of our carbon monoxide. They tell us that in the question. So we use then our, our ratios here to calculate uh, from that how many moles of uh, carbon dioxide and carbon we use to create these two moles of carbon monoxide. Mm. What here? A change where where was it for B one point five? No, why? Why would it be negative one point five? Okay, because we know we have a two year, we use our ratio to calculate how many moles of CO two we use. We didn't use half of it. We only used one mole of it, okay? Because we use our ratios here at the top to calculate this negative one. Uh, uh, for example, these two. Are you asking how do you know you shouldn't use them? Carbon dioxide, this. Okay, so if you want to use all one, in one of your reagents, if you want to use all of them, that it can't be an equilibrium reaction. Okay, an equilibrium reaction needs there to be something of everything for, for the system to be in equilibrium. Okay, so you can see that when they give you this. If you see the two arrows... That means there's a forward and a backwards reaction. So we, I have to work with the equilibrium equation. It's only when they ask you to determine the limiting reagent or calculate the percentage yield or something like that, that we use all of, um, all of one of our reactants. Okay, so now we have the end moles of everything. Now we're adding a new line not like that. We're adding a new line to our mold table because the, 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 the hint is in the name. It's a mold table. So this is our mold values. Okay. What do we need for KC? Concentration. So you add another one where our concentration is equal to our mold divided by our volume. Okay. You can also write it like this, because we are calculating concentrations. Okay, so they tell us we are in a 10 cubic decimeter container. So for carbon, do we calculate the, con the concentration for carbon? Hmm? No, we don't, because it is a solid. Mm, and liquids and solids do not go into our KC value. So we don't calculate the concentration for carbon. Gas, gas is an aqueous. Okay. So for CO2, we see CO2 is a gas. Nice. So we calculate the concentration, which would be 2 divided by 10, which would give us 0 0.2 moles per cubic decimeter and this will also be 2 divided by 10 for 0 0.2 the 2 we get from our mole value from our mole table and the 10 we get from the question itself okay so now we have our concentrations and we can calculate yes we're getting to the KC value now okay so then we, the KC value is the concentration of our carbon monoxide squared divided by the concentration of our carbon dioxide. Then we can substitute without using your calculator. What is the answer to this? Okay, 0, 0,2. Or it is the same as x squared divided by x. Yes. Wait. 
Ok? The carbon is a solid. If you guys stop talking so much to your between you two, you'll hear me. I said it earlier. Okay. So yeah, 0 0.2 squared divided by 0 0.2 is the same as x squared divided by x, which is b equal to x. Okay. So this is a large or a small case value. It's less than one, so it's a small case value. So it's small. What does it mean when our case value is small? Yes, you have to write it out in words. Okay, so. Um, okay, and with this this point, we can also say it has a low. Ooh, that doesn't look like a W. A low yield. Yield. No money. Okay. You need to make a plan to make more money. Okay. So, quickly, this page, page number 12. I'm going to go through it with you. Because you're not back on the full syllabus yet, you don't have to know everything about this page. Okay, so what you must know for the harbor process, right? That is the process where they make ammonia, NH3. Okay, what you must know is that it is an exothermic reaction. And this is actual uh, applications that are being used today. Okay, so to increase the yield to favor of forward reaction they cool the mixture down to a temperature somewhere between 350 and 500 degrees celsius but just let that sink in for a little they cool it down to 350 to 500 degrees celsius what does this tell us it's a exothermic reaction okay so if we cool it down, our forward reaction is favored, which means more product forms, which means more ammonia, which means more money. Yes. Yes. No. Remember, we cool it down, so temperature goes down. So we're favoring the Yeah, so we're favoring the exothermic reaction. And it was heated up to the end of Yes. Okay, and they also um, um, change the pressure to promote the forward reaction to. Uh, favor the forward reaction to have the equilibrium shift to the right okay and they dissolve the ammonia in a liquid something like water to remove it so we, we decrease the concentration of ammonia which means our forward reaction will also be favored okay so more ammonia is being made Yes, when we cool it down, for then our backwards reaction will be favored. Okay, so you must just know that this is an exothermic reaction. Okay, and that this is exothermic reaction and it's called the Harbour process. And it's used to make ammonia. So... Uh, usually, they need, you needed to know all these facts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, not anymore. It's not in the syllabus anymore. Next, we have the contact, contact, contact process, which is to make H2SO4. 
sulfuric acid. So this is made in steps, right? We, we start with probably sulfur plus oxygen to give us SO2. Then we use that SO2 in this equation with more oxygen to give us SO3. Then we use that SO3 plus something like water to get us to the H2SO4. So usually you needed to know all these steps and what you do for each of these steps to promote uh, the forward reaction, to favor the forward reaction so you get more products. You should just know that our second step is an exothermic reaction. Okay? And that is anyway something that they might give you anyway. Okay, so for this, it is also cool. The pressure is um, um, increased. Our pressure is increased, and we remove SO3 from the mixture by dissolving it in concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so now we see the different ways um, in the industry the different ways, the different things they change to promote our forward reaction, to favor our forward reaction so we can get more of our product, so we can get more money. Okay, so this is just examples for the industry. And lastly is the Oswald process to make nitric acid. nitric acid. Okay, so here you can see the three steps. We start with ammonia to get nitrogen monoxide. Then we take that nitrogen monoxide and turn it into nitrogen dioxide. Then we take that nitrogen dioxide and turn it into nitric acid. Okay, so we see it's different steps. And all of these are exothermic. Okay, so how can we improve it? Firstly, by cooling it down. Right. Okay, so nitric acid is used in the manufacture of fertilizers and explosives. So you're going to do a chapter on fertilized, fertilizers later on in this year. Okay, and yeah, they can add a catalyst, platinum, uh, catalytic platinum oxidizer. Oh no, it's just called catalytic oxidization, which means they do add a catalyst uh, to oxidize the nitrogen um, see it happens at a very high temperature 900 degrees celsius at 10 times the atmospheric pressure and once again to promote a forward reaction okay so this is i think the last page in the work then homework for those who do come tomorrow is one two seven question one is just to remind yourself what goes into a KC values um, formula. And then we have calculate a few KC values. And then we talk about a bit theory questions here at number six. Name five ways which the equilibrium position can be shifted to the right, which means we want to favor our forward reaction and stuff like that. Okay, then we'll.